like to bring everyone Okay, up. so uh, here is uh, Sharon Lasviali, Alexander uh, um, Misevic, Maciek Narowski, Dougray Scott, Sophie Nellis. This is the best bit. Hold on. When, I just like to invite a special. No, I know. I mean, there are, that's what I'm going to say. They're here for that, so let's yeah, do that too. Yeah. Um, we would like to invite Irina's daughter, um, Jeannie Oakdyke Smith. And Roman Hala, who is the baby who was born at the end of the film. Roman? about the, the process of creating, of recreating this historical story and the, um, the labor involved in making it feel as real as possible. I know you shot on location, and unfortunately I wasn't here for the introduction, so I don't know how much was discussed at the beginning, but if you could talk about creating the world, uh, recreating the world, and then how, um, Sophie, how you found your way into Irena, I think that would be a great start. Mm -hmm. I didn't create this world, you did. <laughs> um, I'll speak on my behalf, my involvement in this. Um, I immediately, um, when I read the script, fell in love with the story because I just thought it was so touching and powerful. And I've um, seen my fair share of World War II movies, but this one just hit different because of, um, I just think it shows so much courage and strength in, um, there's real light at the end of the tunnel, despite all the horror um, and the sadness of everything that's happened. I think she shows, she's just very inspiring to me. Um, and I, you know, I, Louise and I have been wanting to work together for a while because we're both from Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, and so Not she, just because of that. No, no, <laughs> other reasons I admired her for a lot of her previous work. Um, and and yeah, and going into Irina, I obviously rewatched all of the, all of those um, classic movies, Schindler's List, um, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Um, there was also work with a dialect coach to get the Polish accent straight, which I hope I didn't butcher her here tonight yeah. on the movie. Um, it actually, sounded exactly like my grandmother. So. <laughs> nice, nice work. Good, good, well thank done. You. I'm reassured. Um, and um, and yeah, and it was just it was really. Um, hard for me to find um, real life footage of Irina on the internet, but I did manage to find little clips and what really spoke to me is how um, you could just see how she's still full of life um, and she's such a bright and warm person. Um, just how her mom was, like she mentions in the movie, and I think that's really what I wanted to convey in this movie, um, her likeness, despite everything that's so horrific. Mm. Would you like to talk about how you created this world? May, um, yeah, or do, do we have questions? Or? Mm. We oh, will do okay. questions, <laughs> but, but first. Yeah. Well, uh, as I, I mentioned before, previously, uh, uh, before the film, it was quite uh, moving to, to uh, do this production uh, while uh, war just started next door. 
So, so you know, th there was something that we needed to, to, to talk about and to say. And it, it, we, we had, you know, a, couple, a few weeks of preparation. It was quite fast uh, way of doing a you know, period piece film and we had 29 days. But all the crew and the actors, everyone, were, they were so involved you know, and trying to want to tell that story that we made it happen. But every day was like, you know, we had a, a challenge, but in a positive way, um, because we were all in the same minding of it. And I think probably somewhere there, you know, Irena was with, there. she was with us. And she was like, go, you know, go, go ahead and just do it. And whatever happens, you know, you have to, 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 Tell that story. So yeah, mostly it's that. Oh hi. Um, I, I well, I thought it was an incredible story, and you know, I was saying before today to the press that I think these stories have to be told again and again and again. It's just an extraordinary part of history that, you know, I studied history when I was at school, and I've always been fascinated by um, this particular incident in the world, the genocide, and um, I remember reading Primo Levi when I was a kid and thinking, you know, the, 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 the bravery of this man and how these people got through the day and just how sometimes a ray of sunlight can get you through the next moment uh, until the next hour. And I just thought that it was an incredible story of hope and of perseverance and of light within this darkness that was surrounding them, was suffocating them, was suffocating the whole of Europe at that time. And these stories, I think, are important because it reminds of, us of what happens when a race, when a culture, when a body of people are attacked by, um, you know, evil forces. And we sort of, um, we demonize people, whether it's refugees or whether it's Jewish people. Um, these stories have to be told again and again and again. And uh, I just thought that throughout this darkness, there is this light, this sort of, you know, a crack where the light gets in, I think, to paraphrase Leonard Cohen. Um, so I, I was, you know, passionate about being part of this story. As dark a character as I played, I think that um, he's quite complex. <laughs> but I, I loved the, the experience of it. I mean, it, it was fascinating to watch the film's textures to see you know, like the levels of. I'm not saying they're, you know, I, I, I hesitate to say there were good Nazis, but there's there's very clearly a definition, a distinction between the career soldiers and the SS that the film draws, and Irina learns that she can either manipulate or trust, or manipulate and trust in that order, and her survival skill in figuring that out, and constantly real, like remember, like the way I phrase it in the note is that. You have to channel the thinking, the trauma, the shock over and over and over again because she can forget for a minute or two that she's not at risk or that she is at risk rather. She'll convince herself she's not because she's safe for the moment, but she's just as endangered as everyone else. And Irena pushing herself to that end and figuring out the, the way to navigate the maze, I, that felt like the emotional through line to me when I saw it. And it was just like, how do you... Again, how do you do that without moving? It's all in your eyes. It's all in your. It's all stillness and terror, and, and that's that can't be easy. How, I mean, did you carry the the role back with you? Did, were you able to let it go afterwards? Um, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. We didn't. I mean, first of all, like Louise said, we were shooting right near the Ukraine border, um, and so the effects of the war felt just very close and very real and very raw. And I think that really helped um, obviously tap into those, this, the scariness of it all, the stress, the anxiety, the how sad and traumatizing it all was. Just, I mean, seeing, you know, we often say out of sight, out of mind. So just having those swastikas up and, and the machinery and, and the guns, that in itself was for me very terrifying. Um, and then after, I, I don't know what my eyes do. That's just um, what, what they do. Um, so I can't speak on behalf of, oh, my eyes are coming. That's not planned. Um, but, and I, I don't know, I just, I tap out of character really uh, easily. I think DeGray can uh, speak for this. I just, um, I don't carry it home, really. I mean, I try to let go of it. Um, and when they call cut, I'm literally thinking of what we're gonna eat for lunch. So um, I can't say that I've 
yeah, I'm, I'm doing a good job at letting go of it, although this one is a little particular because it's not just, I mean, it happened mm. um, for real. So I, th there's definitely this constant, constant sort of like reminder on set and we all share this like collective, um, tr not trauma, but yeah, there was definitely a, a particular atmosphere on set. It's honestly a really healthy way to play a part like this, so I'm glad. Uh, so and yes, we did want to psychotic, but <laughs> <laughs> so that's a later problem. <laughs> yes, please. First of all, I want to say thank you to um, you. My <laughs> mother is smiling down on uh, on you. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. For me, if the importance of this movie and the story is so pertinent for right now in today's world. And the message is that one person can make a difference. Each and every one of us have hundreds of opportunities every week to show a kindness, to stand up for something that's right, standing for something that's wrong. Right. And it's my uh, prayer that this film could go on and could be shown all over so that that message could continue to be heard and encouraged because we have a lot of voices pulling us in different directions. And love is the strongest force in the world. And so go forth and tell people things. I just wanted to answer a little bit. I'm the, a daughter of a Holocaust survivor. So for me, being in Lublin and wearing the costumes and wearing the shoes was a really, uh, affecting experience and um i i really uh for me it really felt very very real it was a, a very a, i think it and i think it came across uh, very much your performance was fabulous mm -hmm. and all of the performances were amazing it was very uh, we do have time for a couple oh hey yeah, i went right up uh yes please Yeah, first of all, uh, believe it or not, I'm the baby. Uh, in the meantime, I grew up a little bit and I have gray hairs, uh, but uh, I'm the baby. Uh, first of all, it is a very great film. I expected a very good film, but it is even more than I expected. And and this, it is so important to show this film to many people, especially in a time like today, where the right-wing people are stronger and stronger than before. And I hope so much that this film will go in the whole world and it is also such a good film and I hope that all of you speak about the film and tell your friends and everybody to go to the movie and to look to this film. It's a great film. Your question was what I felt when I saw this. I saw my mother and I saw my father and I saw Irene. Irene is a special woman for me. She is like a second mother. So I have two mothers, I had two mothers, Irene and the mother she gave birth to me. So I am so thankful that uh, Irene was at the right time, at the right place. And I want to tell you, there were people like that, but unfortunately, not enough. If it would be enough, there would 
Now be that six million people would go to the DAS. So it's so important that the film goes around the world and shows what happened at that time. And you can say to the others, you met the baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a, yeah, I mean, you were the first audience to see this. This is the first step on that journey. And uh, you know, we're, we're delighted to be able to be the launching pad for it. There is a second screening. Please tell your friends. Uh, this film is eligible for certain awards. Tip.net.vote is always, or sorry, tip.net slash vote is always there for you. And we have time for one more question. If, um, yes, down front. Uh, I didn't write the script, I know. You said so it's Dan Gordon yeah. who wrote the script, and who knew uh, um, Irena, you know, at some point, some point in his life, in their lives. So the script was was made like that, you know. Um, uh, but um, the challenge, though, I can tell you one challenge. It's not a small one. Those guys, I did cast those guys, not him, the, the, the mean one, but this one, <laughs> the nice one. Well, the father, it's his father, of course, you know, you see the resemblance there? Well, I did cast them by Zoom, you know, I'm in Canada, they're in Poland and stuff. I arrive in Poland like three weeks or not even three weeks before shooting. I meet them. I have 12 to film in that cellar. It's a real cellar. They, and in Poland, they do, they do everything but wow, the best, you know, so we had dirt, we didn't have any windows, it was stuffy, <laughs> and I had big guys like that, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, Paul Sarosi, I think the DP was in the room, wonderful DP, <laughs> so like, how will we film that, you know, all, all of them in that little crumpy place, you know, so it was a real challenge, uh, but everybody, you know, just, you know, yes. also, uh, also, sorry, also mentally, because, uh, you know, we were, we were very, very close to, um, to Ukrainian border, and at that time, a lot of people were uh, hiding in the metro stations, and did the exact same thing, mm -hmm. so it was, uh, it was a, it was a hard, hard thing for us, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, but um, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a, what, one of the challenges, but yeah, it, it was, like he says, Alexander says, we were like in, in so many challenges, but we were playing it. <laughs> People next to us were, you know, ex uh, they were in, they, it was their lives. It's, it still is now, today. And so we just can be uh, humble and, and um, grateful of what we have. And uh, yeah, that's why what we try to, to put on screen. And, yeah, and then so many of you, you know, the Polish actors and the technicians, they told me so many stories of their families, their lives, other wars, you know, then, you know, that it's never ending, but as uh, Ginny says, you know, everyone, you know, one, one gesture changes something. So why not open up? And I think what's beautiful about Irena is that she never wanted light on her. There is light, a crack, but it's not that she didn't want the light. At some point she, she after so many, I guess, uh, years of not telling her story because she moved forward, but with the Holocaust denial after, I guess, 40 years, eh? Something like that. She said, I need to tell my story because it happened and t things still happens. And I want to say to everyone, you know, do something, you know, be open, open your heart, you know, don't judge, uh, don't just like be curious of the others. Maybe you're going to learn something fun and interesting and you're going to grow into something, you know, warmer. Thank you for giving us this tool to do that. Um, carry forward, 
tiff.net slash vote. Um, tell people, tell your friends that this film is worth the ticket. Bring them out. That's the only way people see them. And he's nicer than the Rakita, I promise you. <laughs> to me. Let's see. Louise Archambault, the cast and crew of Lorenzo. Let him hear it one more time. Woo!